Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're now moving into sharing with you things that happened today many years ago. And I'm going back to the year 1937. It's the year that one name that I don't think you can call five names in Nigeria's political history without mentioning this particular name. Mm. Um, the full name, Chief Olushegun Matthew uh, Okikiola, I don't know if I pronounced that right, Aremo Basanjo, was born um, on this day, 5th of March in 1937, in Ogun State, the same Ogun State that we're going to be talking about um, in a bit. Mm -hmm. He is, of course, a Nigerian political and military leader who served as the head of state from 1976 uh, to 1979, and then later as its president from 1999 to 2007. There are a lot of people who, um, of course, uh, would remember him mostly for this, um, you know, that period, 1999 to 2007. Um, so just to look back in history, in the later, later part of the 1960s, he played you know, a senior role in combating the Biafran um, forces back then during the Nigerian Civil War and eventually accepting their surrender in 1970. Um, he was also one of the top military leaders during and after the 1975 coup. And after uh, Murtala Mohammed was assassinated the following year, he took over as head of state. He also saw through with the 1979 election and handed over to Shehu Shagari. And then, um, of course, after Sani Abacha took over in a coup in 1993, Basanjo was arrested and jailed in 1995. He was later released after Abacha's death in 98 and um, then became president uh, after elections, after he won the elections as the PDP's candidate in 1999. Um, his eight years of course, in government, saw some of Nigeria's finest people in government, uh, ministers and um, heads of uh, different government agencies, including some of the people that we currently are celebrating today. Uh, they all, you know, somehow, some way started during Ambassador's uh, uh, time in government. Um, but there's also uh, other things that he was uh, um, praised for setting up uh, the NDDC, Nigeria Delta Development Commission, uh, the ICPC, the EFCC, and of course, the uh, Universal Basic Education Commission, which is a uh, UBEC. Um, our foreign reserves, of course, grew from $2 billion back then to $43 billion at the time he was uh, leaving government. But I wouldn't leave, you know, his celebration by, you know, without talking about some of the things that he was also uh, widely criticized for. Um, there was, of course, the Odi massacre, the Zaki Biam um, uh, killings also that saw hundreds of Nigerians uh, killed by the army. Um, I'm just going to mention them randomly. Okay. There was also the part where in 2014 he tore his PDP, PDP membership uh, card. Uh, th these are certain moments that people would never, you know, um, forget when they're telling his story. Um, he is also one of the first, though, maybe the first person who uh, we would also quote with the shoot on site order um, back then when the Odua People's Congress and, um, um, and there was a chaos, you know, in the southwestern parts of Nigeria of the OPC. And there's still those videos going around where he said, you know, that um, those, uh, you know, people should be shot on site. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, at the end of his uh, tenure in 2007, just before the end of his tenure, he was also um, criticized for seeking a third term, um, 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 or trying to change the constitution mm -hmm. to allow for an extension of his tenure in government. Uh, there was, of course, issues with the vice president back then, Atiku Abubakar. There are certain people who are uh, quoted or are um, said to have um, uh, stood strongly against the third term. There's also allegations that about 10 billion naira mm -hmm. was shared across, you know, the National Assembly in order to um, push for the third term agenda. But, you know, that didn't work. Um, I would also not leave without talking about his wife, Stella Vassenjo, who passed on uh, mm. sometime during his uh, time my in, in government. Uh, oh, well, you know. Yeah, my name is Stella. <laughs> okay. Just don't use it. Good morning, Stella. <laughs> <laughs> who passed on during that time. And, of course, um, a risky one I'll quickly mention also. This one is a rumor, um, accusations of certain relationships that he um, had. These are allegations with um, um, someone's wife. Mm. Um, just to quickly throw that in. But anyway, happy birthday to Chief Olusha Gwabasanjo. Yes. He's still very, very active, you know, somehow, some way in Nigeria's politics. He's still writing letters to, uh, you know, the current uh, president. He's still, of course, saying his piece here and there. And uh, people, you know, at some point, you know, named or, you know, used to look at him as uh, the kingmaker um, of uh, Nigeria's um, um, of government, you know, but you know, that's just all part of his story. Wow, sorry. That's too much. It's a lot, actually, to unpack with regards to Olushigo Basanjo. And, and you've said it all, really. I have nothing to add, just to say <laughs> happy birthday to you, sir. We wish you long life, prosperity, well, yes. 
all the good things of life. Yes. So moving on, this day in history, March 5th, 1980. What happened today was that the Lady of Many Firsts, we call her the Lady of Many Firsts because of her history of being the first lady to accomplish a lot of things in the country. And she's Chief Mrs. Folake Sholanke. She became the first female senior advocate of Nigeria. Wow. She became the first Nigerian female lawyer to wear that silk gown as a senior counsel. I mean, looking at the history, you know, of Mrs. Shulanke, you're just so inspired. You just can't help but be motivated to feel that as a woman in Nigeria, you can achieve anything. So she at the let's let's go back, you know, into her early history. At the West African School Certificate Examinations, she was the first student of her school to obtain grade one. She is one of the most decorated Nigerian women, living or dead. She's received numerous awards, including the award, the National Honor of the Commander of the Order of the Niger, honorary de doctorate degrees from various universities across Nigeria. She's contributed so much to learning. She's published two books, published over 70 papers. And just recently, January 17, 2015, she was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, by the Sun newspaper in Lagos. She's 89 years old this year, and uh, she's been very vocal, you know, in, in Nigerian politics and law. And I remember when she was very active, you know, in calling for the release of Omar Yeli Shoria when he was arrested. And there's a quote she, I, I have of her. She said, 50 years ago, when I became a lawyer, obedience for court order was sanctified. Nobody dared disobey court orders, but today the reverse is that's the case, case, and we know that that's true. But anyway, today, uh, March 5th, 1980, uh, Miss Chief Mrs. Folake Sholanke became the first SAN in Nigeria. Sadly, we don't have, um, and it's uh, something that we've on this, you know, uh, platform mentioned a few times, you know, how uh, we need to constantly and, you know, always speak about more um, inclusivity of, you know, women, you know, more involvement, more opportunities for women, um, more of these, you know, accolades, you know, for women in Nigeria. Um, we should, it's not fair to have a society that over, you know, years has, you know, very, very small percentage of women in certain positions or achieving certain goals. Um, if you look across Nigeria's history, there are certain women that you, you know, definitely always mention. Uh, Dora Kunyili, you would mention Nungozio Konjowela, who's you know head of the uh, the World Trade Organization. Now mm -hmm. you mention, of course, um, Sri Lanka. You would mention, um, but we, I feel that we need to do a little bit more or fight a little harder to ensure that women reach these heights and reach the beginning you know, with goals. education. Because I mean, yes, if she never education. went to school, studied law, all of these achievements wouldn't have been possible. So yeah. the fundamental thing is education for the girl child. Absolutely. Very powerful. You know, and that also, you know, requires changing the, the narrative, you know, from the families um, across, you know, many Nigerian homes who don't feel like the girl child needs to go to school mm -hmm. because, well, uh, you know, at some point, you know, she's she going to be married, married off, you know, and so there's no need to invest that much in a girl child. And also what our society really, you know, thinks about women in these positions, you know, the, the fear that some people, you know, supposedly have of powerful women. All those things, you know, are, are you know, things that happened in the 60s. We should be in, in the 20th century. I mean, I even uh, laugh at the thought of these things. If, if you have that mindset, please change. Yeah. Thank All right. you very much. So, yeah, your 1980? Yes, 1980. And I went back to 1987, uh, the birthday, and of course, uh, of uh, Chief Olusego Basanjo. He was born in Ogun State on this day in 1937. That's all we have for you mm -hmm. um, so, today in history. Yes, next up we'll be talking about uh, the president, President Muhammad Buhari and his shoot on site order and how people are comparing this in many ways to uh, Obasanjo <laughs> who we just spoke about after the break.